At this moment, we want to look into your word. Lord, we ask you will speak from above to touch our lives, both young and old, in Jesus' name. And uh, as we specifically want to devote this day in our family month for our young people, young adults, and the youth, and our children, Lord, I pray you will touch their lives. You will help them to know your way so that they will walk therein in Jesus' name. I pray for special grace. We know it's not easy, especially in this side of the world, but we believe that your grace abounds everywhere, all over the world. We pray you will be with these, our people, our children. Help them to make the best choice of their lives as you guide and lead them and as we get into this message. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to read for my tests as usual. I'll be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 1 to verse 4. But this time I'm reading just verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, Matthew 7, 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and, uh, and the flood came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock hallelujah you had the mention of the rock because we have been speaking about the rock the rock being what it is the foundation of the christian marriage the lord wants us to pay attention also to our young people as a young man as a young woman you need to pay attention right here the rock you saw have the rock as your foundation. The rock has to be your foundation in every area of your life. So we're going to help you at this time so you can make proper decision of your life in the future. For the past two weeks, as I've already told you, we've seen the importance of allowing Christ, the rock, to be the bedrock of every marriage. And then it is equally important for the young people, as I said earlier, to know this so that they will not depart from the rock. Just as the scripture says, we teach them the way when they grow, they will not depart from it. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13, I read from verse 4. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But for monks and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage, honorable in all. In all nations, marriage is honorable. In all races, marriage is honorable. In all traditions, marriage is honorable. In all customs of the world of this life, marriage is honorable. In all languages, in all tongues, in all tribes, villages, color, marriage is honorable among the old and the young. Marriage is honorable, men and women. Marriage has to be honorable because that's what the Bible says. Educated, yes, marriage is honorable. I, even in, among the idol worshippers, marriage is honor, honorable. Among the atheists, marriage is honorable. Among Christians and other religious circles, marriage is honorable. In all areas of life, that is what the Bible has said, that marriage is honorable. If a marriage is not honorable, then it is opposite of honorable. And what is the opposite of honorable? It is dishonorable. And if a marriage is dishonorable, it does not please the Lord. As we examine marriages of today, we can say marriages, most of them, most of them are not honorable at all in all. If the husband is beating the wife, that is dishonorable marriage. If the man is cheating the woman, that is not in an honorable marriage. It is a dishonorable marriage. If the man is oppressing, 
maltreating, belittling, and trampling over the woman, then marriage is dishonorable in all. On the other hand, also, if the woman is disrespectful and the woman is maltreating the husband and the woman is disobedient to the man and the woman is, dis- is uh, not reverencing the man, then marriage is dishonorable while the man is physically abusing and sending wounds to that or to the husband then the woman is also psychologically sending wounds to the man while the man is causing trauma in the home the woman is verbally sending arrows into the hearts of the man that makes marriage dishonorable may the lord help us so that we will have a Honorable marriages in our homes, honorable marriages in our church, honorable marriages in our lives in Jesus' name. And for these, our children, may the Lord give them honorable marriages in the future. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If the woman does not feed the man, give him good food, does not cook for him, it's not reverencing him. If the woman puts herself above the man, and if the woman think about herself as better than the man, then marriage is dishonorable. That is selfish, and it makes marriage dishonorable. If either is deceitful, unfaithful, is cruel, is wicked, then marriage is dishonorable. If the man is furious, and the woman is nagging, and the man is abusive, and the woman is evil and wicked, then marriage is dishonorable. Yet the Bible says uh, marriage is honorable in all. About the children, we don't want them to have these dishonorable marriages. That's why we want them to find the rock, being Christ, who is the foundation. Now we look at the requisite or the requirements that is what I'm going to tell you about. And it's, it's mainly for the children. And for us adults, so we can remind them and help them and teach them to make the choice that they need to have in their life when they are ready for marriage. So I'm going to look at the requisites or the requirements, which are the experience, seven of them. But before that, I want us to read from uh, Psalm chapter 11, Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation we build in them from childhood, that is the salvation experience, the holiness experience, the love and peace experience, the prayer life experience, choosing good friends in life experience, the industry being industrious in life experience, the dependence on the good companion who who is the Holy Ghost experience that we teach them. If this foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do if the foundations are cracked open and they are shaking and they are wobbling and they a kind of not standing as they have to, they will eventually crumble and then they will be destroyed. So as I told you, families of today need help. And we are going to help this our family. In fact, they need holistic, holistic. They need holistic help, which means if the man is going to be who he ought to be, if the woman is going to be who she ought to be, then holistically, which is uh, every area of uh, her or his life, uh, she has to be that man, that woman, physically strong, emotionally strong, psychologically strong, financially strong, medically strong, mentally strong, matrimonially also strong. That is the woman. That is the man that is going to make a home that is going to be a godly home, a home that is well deserved. I'm going to talk to you about seven things here. Number one, eternal pardon. Eternal pardon. These are the seven pillars that we need. There may be many, but at least these are very important that every home needs. Seven pillars. Eternal pardon. Number two. Entire purity, 
Number three, earnest prayer. Earnest prayer. Number four, evident partition. Evident partition. Number five, economically proficient. Economically proficient. Number six, endearing partner, loving partner. Number six, excellent paraclete. Excellent paraclete. The word, par- the word paraclete is just the comforter. That is the Holy Ghost. Excellent paraclete. Let's go back to number one. From number one, eternal pardon. In Isaiah chapter 55, I read from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. God will pardon you. God will pardon me. God will pardon that. Uh, symbolically, the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, as they cried unto him, and he delivered them from their oppression. And while they were journeying to the promised land, uh, look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. He gave this instruction unto them, which we as delivered, as pardoned, uh, saved, uh, as also read in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and uh, whither and, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hebrews, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Look at verse 4. Let me read verse, sorry, verse 3 is okay. Let me read verse 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. These are heathen. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. That what God is saying is when you get to the land, these people are heathen people. They don't serve me. Therefore, don't give your people, your children, son or daughter to them to marry. But you know, at your campus, they will come and they will ask, will you marry me? I heard you were a child of God. I heard you were a Christian and I heard that Christian people are good people and I want to marry a good person. Will you marry me? At your workplaces, they will come. They will ask for the same thing. At your neighborhood, they will come. They will ask for the same thing. I heard that you are children of God. You are Christian. You are a Christian. Will you marry me? I even heard that you were a deeper life. And I heard deeper life people are very good people. Deeper life uh, uh, ladies are very good people. They won't fight you. They won't make trouble. They even surrender their paycheck to you. Ah, that is the that is the wife I'm looking for. Will you marry me? The Bible says, don't pity them. Have no mercy on them. They may be rich. Don't pity them. They may be educated, but don't pity them. They may be popular in this life. Don't pity them. They may be successful in life. Don't pity them. They may be be handsome and beautiful. No matter what it is, the Bible says we are not to pity them. And you ask why? Simply because they don't know me. Because they don't serve me. Because they don't worship me. Because they don't have me as their God. And as such, I and you, being my children, cannot have any affiliation with them. You cannot intermarry with these people. Look at verse verse 4 again. For they will turn. Look at verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 4. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. They will shoot your foundation, which is upon Christ. They will swerve your foundation, which is upon Christ. They will crack open your foundation. They will eventually destroy your foundation. And that is why my daughter, my son, and you parents here, 
you are not going to allow your children to go outside of Christ to intermarry with them. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 tells us that the foundation of God standeth sure. And later, everyone that named the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. As you are desiring to marry, you look for one, somebody who has departed from iniquity. The person that is saved, a saved man, not a rich man, a born again woman, not a degree holder woman. And a believer, not an unbeliever, one who is redeemed, not one still in sin. That is what you want to marry. Look at Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Second Corinthians chapter six. I'm reading from verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Simple as that. And you know, let me talk to the parents here a little bit. As a parent, as you help seek in prayer for a saved child to marry your daughter, a saved uh, uh, a daughter to marry your son, you need to first of all come home to yourself and ask yourself, is my own daughter saved? Is my own son saved? If I'm looking for a saved one to marry my own, is my own saved? Is my own righteous? Is my own redeemed? You need to do that homework yourself. Our children must be saved before we pray for a saved man, a saved woman to come and marry them. And it doesn't matter who you are. An unsaved child of the pastor cannot, cannot by the merit of being a child of the pastor go and marry a saved brother or a saved sister if she herself or him himself is not born again it does not work that way everybody must be saved the child of the pastor the child of the deacon the child of the deacon the child of the member the child of whoever everybody must be saved before we we allow such thing to happen Eh, eh, we were, we were, we we're the leaders. Our children must marry before. There's nothing like that. She, the requirement is just simple. She or he has to be what? Born again. Eh, I came to this church before them. Why must their children marry before my own child? It doesn't work that way. Your child must be what? Born again born again because my father is apostle abc and my mother is deaconess xyz does not give me that authority to marry if i am not born again you know? Uh, a, a brother who is saved or a sister who is saved. I move on to the second point, part, which is entire purity. So we have looked at the first one. What I'm saying there is make sure you are born again, you are saved, you are redeemed, you are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Number two, entire purity. Why is purity demanded? Very important. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, 5 verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. This is the commandment to every one of us, both the man and the woman. Submission is required both from the man and the woman. But as we read further, Paul begins to explain each part, the part of the man and the part of the woman. Let's look at verse 22. Verse 22, wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That is the part of the woman, submission. Let's look at the part of the man. Verse 25, husband. Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, we are talking about sacrificial love, willing love. We are talking about love that gives and gives, love that is compassionate. We're talking about love that is helpful, willing to help and willing to care. That is the kind of love we are talking about here. We are talking about that person who is selfish. And you know, at times we begin to play this selfish game. I want a wife. 
I want a wife that will submit to me. That's a selfish dream. I want a wife, a wife that will be meek to me, a wife that will be humble to me, a wife that will be quiet in spirit. That is the prayer we pray. We, we never pray that, oh God, as a man. You see, when the man is praying, that is how he, he prays. But why not turn the prayer and say, oh God, I know you want me to love my wife. Let me have a wife that I can love. You hardly hear that prayer that God, give me a wife that I will love and I will take good care of and I will buy all that she will want me to buy for her. Lord, give me that wife. The same thing with them, with the woman. The woman prays, Lord, give me a husband that will love me, that will take good care of me, that will protect me, that will, that will not abandon me. But she never prays that Lord, give me, let me have a, a husband that I will submit to, Lord. Help me to have a husband that I will, I will reverence. Help me to have a husband that I will respect. You normally hear that prayer, you don't hear. That is selfish game that we do. We only, we only expect our partner to do, to do what we want to do for us, but we are not ready to pray that God will help us to do to them what they want. I pray our children will not go that route in Jesus' name. And you yourself, this is for you, that you will not go that route in Jesus' name. Those of us adults, we are not going to do that. If we have been doing that, let's flip it. Don't just be praying, my, my husband must love me. My husband must love me. Pray that Lord, help me to submit to my husband. And you husband, don't just, don't just my wife must submit. My wife must submit. You pray that God help me to do my part. And as you pray that the Lord, uh, you pray that the Lord will help you to do your part. He will help you also in Jesus name. I said he will help you in Jesus name. When you submit, you are doing God's will. And when you love, you are doing God's will. And that is why sanctification is very, very important. That's why holiness is the key. And that is why we have to have this particular experience in our lives. Because let me tell you, young people, you are going to face offenses. And if you are not sanctified, to forgive your partner is going to be a problem. Look at verse 25 again. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Gave himself for it. He gave himself for it. You know, God gave us Jesus. Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is still giving. That is love. He gives us healing gives us strength, gives us knowledge, gives us wisdom, gives us understanding, gives us revelation, gives us power, anointing, authority, unction. All this Holy Ghost supplies us every now and then. This is what we call love. I pray, husbands, we will do that in Jesus' name. Verse 26, that he might sanctify, that is it, he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And was the reason that he might present to himself a glorious church, a glorious church. This church will be glorious in Jesus' name. Not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Your family will not have any blemish in Jesus' name. Verse 33, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. So he's concluding everything for us. This is the part of the man. Let everyone in particular, let my brother over there in particular, let my brother over here in particular, so love his wife, even ask himself. And then wife, listen, and the wife see that uh, my sister over here, the wife, my sister over here, the wife, also see that he, she reverence her husband. It shall be so for every one of us. Hallelujah. Number three, earnest prayer. Earnest prayer. And here I want my children, my daughters. My daughters, are you there? Ah, my sons, are you there? I need you to listen. Earnest prayer. See, your degree is not going to give you a husband or a wife. It will not choose for you. Okay? 
your beauty is not going to choose a man or a woman for you. Your handsomeness can't not do that for you. Sight, sight, seeing a woman, seeing a man appealing to you will not give you. Going to buy binoculars or a telescope to be looking around for, for who to marry will not help you. Flipping coins, this is uh, the tail is sister uh, B. Uh, the, the head is sister X, will not give you what God wants you to have. None of these will help you. Striking lotto. You know how to play lotto? Uh, I have sister, sister Joy, sister, sister Grace, sister uh, Comfort, sister Juliana. Okay, I put them on paper. Paper one is sister one. Paper this is paper. Then I I I, I kind of uh, uh, squeeze it and then uh, oh God, whichever I choose, uh, let him be, let her be. Whichever I choose, let her be. And uh, on the on the flip side, the the lady, the uh, the the young lady is also having John, James, Judas, and uh, ah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and whoever four of them and then uh, we'll be doing this doing this and put it down and then lord uh, as i'm picking let it be him then you pick oh huh sister juliana <laughs> then you pick here ah brother john ah that will not do for you sticking lotto on people will not do for you. Dressing seductively to attract, buying gifts to grab, and sending and calling on phone to, to, to alert people and let them be, be, be aware that you are also here. That will not do. Just to create awareness about yourself is not going to help you. You know what? The most spiritual among us can make a mistake. It doesn't matter as long as we are human beings, we are not perfect. God wants us to be perfect in life, in heart, but in knowledge, we are not going to be perfect. That's why we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Only God knows that. And that is why, as a child of God, a daughter, a son, you need to pray earnest prayer when you want to go into marriage because everybody can make a mistake. God only knows the heart of the people. God only knows the heart of the man and the heart of the woman. God only. Samuel of all prophets made a mistake. Nathan of all prophets made a mistake. And that is why I count myself as a human and I can make a mistake. That's why I'm appealing to you, children, that because you can make a mistake, pray to God. In Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Which means, if we put the sentence well, it says, uh, if you, a wife is a good thing. And if you find that good thing, it means it has come from the Lord. The second part says, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. A good wife who is favored comes from the Lord. A good wife that is favored does not come from Facebook. A good wife that is favored will not be found in the internet. Did you hear their stories? Oh, I met that man. I thought she she was a good man. And then he came and scammed me. A favored man, woman, comes from, from the Lord. From the Lord. Not from social media. Not from dating sites. How can you find one? You, don't, you won't find them on the street. You are not going to find them at the nightclubs. And you are not going to find them at the dancing halls, at the wedding, at the funeral, at the parties, at the, at the naming ceremonies where you go. You are not going to find that good woman, that good uh, favored woman. You will not find them there. And we're not going to allow the introduction of friends to do it for you. Hey, my friends, introduce, introduce him to me. My, even my parents, uh, my grandmother, uh, interested, oh, this family, they are good people, introduce to you 
that is not going to do for you. You pray only to God to lead you as a child of God. Going back to the pictures of old and flipping the pictures of old classmates, schoolmates. Ah, I remember that boy. Hey, I remember that girl. Ah, let me call and see. Maybe, maybe he is empty. Maybe she is empty. That will not do for you. It's only God, a child of God. You depend upon him to give to you what, what best fit in your life. You have to go on your knees. You pray and pray and praying and prayerful. You go on your knees and you also walk by faith and not by sight as the scripture tells us. Let's look at chapter 19 of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers and a prudent wife. A wise wife, an industrious wife, a wife that is well equipped, well trained, is from who? From the Lord. I've already told you, you won't get them on the street. You won't get them on the internet. Some people think it's impossible for God to give us a partner when we pray. They say God can give us bread to eat. God can give us food to eat. God can give me a shoe. God can give me a pant, a suit. God can give me a house. God can give me a car. But a, hum, a whole human being, God, no. Will God, will God create that person for me now? Or will the person drop from heaven? They don't know. They don't read the Bible. Where did Adam come from? And where did his wife come from? God did it. That same God is still alive. And if you are confused about God giving you your life partner, just pray and uh, seek his face. He will surprise you in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the Bible says, My thoughts, my thoughts, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. In your marriage in the future, God wants to give you that expected end. Look at verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me. Call upon me about your husband. Call upon me about your wife. Call upon me about your future partner. And what will he do? And ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Ye shall call upon me. You will, you will call upon me about your wife about your husband, about your companion, about your helpmeet, and I will hear. Look at verse 13. And ye shall seek me. You will seek me to help you to know your wife, to know your husband, to know your future partner, and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. I move to the next one, which is number four. Number four. Evident partition. Evident partition. As you plan to marry, there has to be a clear separation, a clear distinction between you and uh, anybody, especially the opposite the sex that you have not married. You, there has to be dissociation of self from all premarital friends, groups. Example, you, at your neighborhood, you grew with some people and you know them. You know them. It's possible for your mind to be playing. Ah, is, that, is, is it that boy? Is it that girl? Not only that, you went to school, maybe high school, primary school, college mates, even work mates, even churchy. At times, we group you to do something. And uh, uh, incidentally, the two of you, boy, girl, uh, brother, sister, may, may come into a group and be doing something. It's possible for your mind to play that trick on you. Uh, the way that brother behaves and thinks and does his thing. Uh, God is that he is that. That is why you need to dissociate. You have to say, separate yourself. 
I'm not so I'm not saying go and tell somebody, hey, don't call me again, don't greet me again. No, that is not what we are saying. But I, I hope you understand. Dissociate yourself. That is free your mind. Free your mind. Let everything, in other words, you don't want to put anybody as an idol. Make an image of the person before you that you're going to dream about at night. You are daydreaming in the morning, daydreaming in the the afternoon at night when you go you see vision of this person you have to dissociate stop thinking about it is this one it must be this one or it is that one free your heart and free your mind don't make idols in your heart in ezekiel chapter 14 verse 3 ezekiel chapter 14 verse number 3 son of man son of woman these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Should I, should I allow them to come before me and to ask for anything? In my language, we say, you don't go to the farm, to the bush, and catch a bed. You, you take all the feathers out, and then you bring it to your father to name it for you. You don't do that. And uh, when you are having an image already in your heart that uh, this, I will marry this at all cost. I will marry this lady at all cost. Uh, my, my, I, have to, I have to marry a medical, a, 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 a physician at all cost. If it's not, let me tell you, there, are some, there were some people who were entrenched in this kind of decision. And up till now, they have not married. It has to be this brother at all cause. I know. Not that somebody told me. I know. And it's even when those people have already, were already in caution, some sisters were still, it is this brother that God showed me. Even if God showed you that person and that person is moving on, why must you not move on? And you stay there, you are, you are entrenched in it that it is this sister, it is this brother. It's up till now. Such people, they did not marry. I pray it will not be any of our children here in Jesus' name. You will get married in Jesus' name. It has to be a pastor. Me? Ha. It has, if, I don't, if I don't get a pastor, I'm not going to marry. What, are you sure God wants you to marry a pastor? And some will say, I want to marry a sea man or a sea woman. Uh, do you know how many months a sea man sleeps on the sea? And you want to marry a sea man? Are you sure? If God is leading you, that is fine. But why do you want to do it yourself at all costs? It has to be a businessman. It has to be an attorney. It has to be a nurse. It has to be a doctor. Please. It has to be a tall guy. Fair color. If you are an American and you want to marry a white lady, that is even pardonable. But why do you stay somewhere like that and want to marry a white lady? I, I don't think you are like that. Huh? Village. I don't think you are like that. Mm. You are not like that. I know you. You won't do that. And our children will not do that in Jesus' name. See, if we, and God says, if we, in a... Uh, insist that uh, this is what I want. The Bible says God will answer you according to the multitude of your idols. That is, God will just allow you. Okay, okay, if that is what you want, go. But when he is beating you, it's, you, you will feel the pain yourself. When he gets drunk, and they come and vomit, and you are kind of cleaning the vomit. They throw out. You are cleaning it. Uh huh. Yeah, you don't like it. But if you are not prayerful, and you are not looking up to God, God forbid, you will not get there in Jesus' name. I said you will not get there in Jesus' name. So don't pick anything and bring it to God. That God confirm it for me at all costs. Let your rubber stamp be upon it for me at all costs. No. You have to clear your heart. You have to clear your mind of every idol. Let your heart be free of every boy, of every girl, of every young adult, of every young woman, of every young man. Let your heart be clear of everything like that. So that when God speaks... 
you will hear. I am moving on to number five. Economically proficient. Economically powerful. Economically well to do. This talks about having what it takes to take care, especially as a man, to take care of the family. You must have a source of income. You will need to take care of your family adequately. So you have to be somebody who has uh, the strength, the ability, and the capability to work. And also you receive paycheck. You have to be receiving paycheck because you are going to take care. You are going to feed people. And uh, this, as I said, especially the man, the young man. That's, that, that is looking out for somebody to marry. You are the one that I am talking to at this moment. You have to have something that you live on. You live on. But if you are somebody that already you are being fed, you cannot, you cannot enter into it. You are not economically powerful, economically proficient. Know that? You tell me, son, man, if a batch, if, if as a bachelor, tell me, son, are you listening? Don't sleep, oh. Especially you men. Okay, G, are you there? Yeah, he's listening. Gerald, listening. And all of you boys, are you listening? Uh-huh. You tell me, as a bachelor, you can't even feed yourself. What is the guarantee that you can? That, and your, yourself is just one mouth. Now, what is the guarantee you can, you can feed two stomachs? And after a year or two, you get, and if you are lucky, you, you bring the children in twins. I learned there is a, there is a, a town uh, in, somewhere in Nigeria. Everybody there is a twin. I don't know. Is that true? Almost. Almost. So it's not everybody, but greater percentage is like, so if you happen to come from this place and uh, you have a set of six, that is what? That is a football team plus extra reserve. You see? And then you couldn't even feed just your own stomach. How are you going to feed all these people? So you need to make sure that you are capable of taking care of yourself. You work, you receive pay. You are not somebody that is sleeping with your mommy, sleeping with your daddy. No. You have to be a man on your own. The same thing applies to the woman. As a woman, you must be able to cook. If you can't cook your own food that you eat each every day, you can't cook it. What's the guarantee you'll be able to cook for your husband and your children that you are going to give birth to? Look at Proverbs chapter 6. I'm reading verse 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Thou lazy man, thou lazy woman, thou uh, a man that has laid down his tools, thou man that, uh, that, that has put down his certificate and his uh, 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 license or certification or degree, thou man that is wasting, wasting your, your knowledge and your understanding, go to the end, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, verse 7, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer, and gathered her food in the harvest. Verse 9, how long will thou sleep? How long will thou fold thy hands? How long will thou be idle? How long will thou let your certificate and your degree and your tools lie down doing nothing? O sluggard, when will thou arise out of thy sleep? Verse 10, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to sleep. Verse 11, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth. And thy want as an ant man. An ant does not depend upon the bed to eat. In fact, if the ant is going to depend upon the bed, before he realizes he has been eaten by the bed. So the ant does not depend upon the, uh, the bed to provide him food. He goes out himself to look for food and prepare himself. As our brother was telling us the other day, the ant knows during rainy season, if he make a mess of his life, the, uh, the, the flood, 
will do what? Will carry it away. So before the rain comes, he has already prepared himself. You know you are going to marry. Why will you not prepare? You know, the rainy time is your, is your wedding period. I mean, it's your marriage period. And by that time, you would have prepared yourself and you know the work you are doing. You know the income that's coming in and you'll be able to uh, help your own family. If you are only depending on our charity, people to feed me. You, uh, do you have a dollar there? Uh, can I get $10 over there? If you are depending on these food stamps, you're collecting food stamps and you want to marry, that, that is not good. Food stamps will be good for the government to help you with. But on your own part, food stamps is very bad. It's very bad. If you have done it, well, we thank God that should be passed. But now, you need to wake up and do something for yourself. Are you waiting for the charitable organizations, churches, to pay your bills for you? This philanthropist to give you your rent money and to get you food? That is not good, man. That is not good, even if you are a woman. You need to wake up, be like the ant, and wake up and do something for yourself. You will do something for yourself. Hallelujah, you will do something for yourself. You have your hands, you have your brain, you are able to go out there, make use of your hands to do something. Don't make life difficult for yourself. We are not going to see you at the corner of the street and you are begging bread. You put something on your, your, on your head and you, you see a car coming and then you, 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 you do this, that they should give you a dollar over there. Somebody should give you a dollar over there and yet you are praying to marry a child of God. It shall not happen to you in Jesus. And when you get married, you are not going to be a beggar and make your children beggars in the name of Jesus. You are not going to be that, uh, you know, those people that live in that uh, belt, some Sahara area, fair colored people. They used to come to our place and then and these, they, they have children. The adults, they, they, they don't care. They just give birth to people not thinking about how to take care of them. And then and they will go and hide somewhere and push these children to go and beg for money. And at times they, with force, these children will actually physically come and force want to force the money out of you, they'll be holding. At times, you have to also be stern and aggressive against them. And then that is when you see them going bad. Our children are not going to be like that. And you are not going to render your children to be in that position, to be in that situation. We will see that we have a strong standing family for every child of ours. As you see, as parents, we are not begging we are not depending upon charity. We are not taking false stamps. We want you to do better. You will do better in Jesus' name. I said you will do better in Jesus' name. In America, it's a land of opportunity. You can do whatever you want to do. College is there. Take, take the, the government will give you money to go to your college if your parents are not having it. You can learn trade. There are so many trades out there that you can learn. It's not only college. And then uh, there are so many programs out there that you can enter, learn something. Some of them are uh, just maybe three months course or six month course. You come out uh, and you're going to get something substantial that can take care of you and your family. Look at First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse number 8, but if any man, but if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, that is the immediate family, wife, husband, children, uh, especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And is worse than all these religious people. It's worse than Hindu. It's worse than Buddha. It's worse than atheist. It's worse than Muslim. It's worse than, and he's a child of God. If you are not able to provide for your own family, that is what the word infidel means. Let's go to point Point number six, endearing partner. Endearing partner. That is a loving partner. We will love our wives. Children, you will love your wives. And you sons, pray that God help me to love my wife. 
daughters, pray that God help me to submit a loving partner. That's a caring partner. If you can't love, you can't marry. If you can't love, you can't do what? You can't marry. May the Lord give us his own love in our hearts. That as we pray to have our partners in our lives, we will do all it takes to marry them, sorry, to love them in Jesus' name. See, marriage like a car is run on the engine of love. That is what it is. Marriage like a house is built on the foundation of love. It stands on that foundation. You can't find it. It's not about WhatsApp love. It's not Facebook love. This love we're talking about is not electronic. Elect- electronic loves. You know electronic loves? They send you cards. They send you messages. They send you texts. They send you on WhatsApp. All these are electronic love. We're talking about real love. This is the love that is devoid of self-centered. You are not centering on yourself. It's, it's not love that is self-pity. It's devoid of self-will. You know, some people are self-will. This is what I have. I say I will do. I don't care what my husband will say. I don't care what my wife will say. This is what I say. That is the self-will. And the self-controlling person. That is not the kind of love. Selfishness. Always thinking about myself and mine and me and I. Wanting to take advantage of the other people, that is not a love that is going to help any family to stand. No. If you think only about yourself, you don't have love. Ask her to cook. Even now that she is still in his father's, in her father's house, in her mother's house, ask her to cook. She will cook and uh, she will take the big meat, the big meat, the big fish. The, the delicious part. She will want to take that part. If you go to your home, your family, you're probably, probably going to do the same thing. And that will not help you. That is selfishness. That means you don't have love. If you think only about yourself, only about your comfort, only about your convenience, you are not going to be a good wife. Listen to me very well. If you enter into marriage without Christ-like love in heart, it's just a matter of time. And your attitude will betray you. And your character will expose you. And your moral fiber within you is going to dispose you. Everybody will know that you are just a char, a chaff. You are nothing. If you are destitute of love, and if you are bereft of charity, and if you are wanting on the scale of love, you are wanting, you cannot survive in marriage. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. First Corinthians chapter Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse number 8. Charity never fails. That is, love never fails. It doesn't matter where you go. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. My brother, did you hear that? My sister, do you hear that? What God is telling us here is that when it comes to family, even spiritual matters doesn't come in here. Please listen to this very well. When it comes to family, spirituality doesn't, family is above spirituality. Let me put it that way. Play. Family is above every spirituality that you think about. That's why in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in chapter, in verse 1, he starts telling us some things. So don't raise spirituality above the relationship between you and your wife. Family matters are, are spiritual in themselves because God instituted that marriage. So you cannot come and tell me, I speak in tongues, I prophesy, I have faith, I have these spiritual things. When your marriage is crumbling, you've already failed. You've already failed. Marriage, God looks, am I a minister? God is not looking at my preaching. God is not looking at my prophesying and my praying and the exhibition of uh, all these miracles that I do. God looks first at my marriage, my life, my marriage. Is that okay? Is that correct? If that is not, I'm already, I'm already counted out. I think a brother posted something, an article, and uh, under that article, it has uh, some numbers. The number nine one. 
one. If you if you can go back and read it, the number nine one says uh, if you if your marriage if between you and your wife if there is any problem and you are shouting on the pulpit, hey, pack yourself. Pack yourself. Go and read it. And uh, I love that one. So God is telling us here that after marriage comes first before all these things. Uh, and that is why I, I am telling my children over here, daughters and sons, that play your card very well. And make sure you pray well that God will give you that person. God will give you what you need. So I can pray, I can fast, I can I speak in tongue, I prophesy, I have faith, I do miracles, descending, understanding mysteries, and I have knowledge, I have heavenly uh, revelations. They are good, but family first. Family first. I can preach, I can teach family first. Listen, beloved children. To keep your marriage moving, love is the key. Because when beauty is no more, because wrinkles has taken place of that, the face. When pregnancy of the stomach has kind of devastated the shape that you saw before. When gray hairs come up and replace the normal one. When anger and fury replaces the smile, the charming smiles that you, you loved before. Love is that one that will keep the marriage moving. And that is why charity is very much important. As we talk about charity, deal with your pride. Deal with your anger. And deal with the threats that you give. In fact, it's better to break anything at the time of courtship than to say, well, so many people have seen it. See, there are signs. You know, there are signs. You, you are an, in courtship and this man, any little thing, eh, I, will even, I will even stop this marriage. That is a sign. You better stop it right there before you enter into the marriage. Don't say, and man, now uh, everybody has known it. And if, uh, what will they say? What will they say? Okay, you move on like that. And when you get into the marriage, then you see what we are talking about. You, you are with this lady in courtship, and this lady is disrespectful. Respectful. Doesn't re- anything, eh? this, this, that. Uh, that is a warning sign. You need to pray well and do something about your life. I want to move on to the last one, which is excellent paraclete, which means uh, you're going to have a companion. We need this companion, an advocate that is going to walk along with us. In John chapter 14, verse 16, John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. I've been comforting you all this while, but I'm going to send another comforter as I pray to my Father, that he may abide with you forever. Hallelujah. It's not going to leave you until the world ends, until you end your assignment on earth. is going to be with you. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Praise the Lord. Now look at verse 26. That is John chapter 14, verse 26, by the comforter. Yes, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He will teach you how to pray for a wife. He will teach you how to pray for a husband. He will teach you how to love your wife. He will teach you how to submit to your husband. He will teach you all things. Teach you all things. He will remind you of how to love, to submit, to respect, to reverence, to protect and to cook and to greet him when he is coming from outside at the door. He will teach you how to go and meet your husband at the door and to greet him and to bring him uh, into the house. He will teach you how to love your wife tremendously. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many, hallelujah, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. They are led by the Spirit. They are not led by sight. They are not led by sentiments. They are not led by emotions, by greed, 
I want a rich man at all costs. I want a businesswoman at all costs. They are not led by greed. They are not led by matchmakers. They are not led by madams in the church. They are not led by position. I want somebody up there. And they are not led by property. They are not led by their popularity. Oh, that is my husband. See how popular he, he is. That's my wife. Look, see how popular she is. They are not led by any of this. They are led by the spirit. And these are the sons of God. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Let's stand up and go to the Lord in prayer.